Hi, you're listening to Everyday Superpower, a place where you can learn about body language and nonverbal communication. If you like what you hear, click like. If you want to subscribe, feel free to click subscribe. I recommend you do. And if anything comes to mind, feel free to click... Well, feel free to leave a comment, basically. So, uh, without further ado, let's get on to it. Today we're going to be talking about the chewing of the lips, rubbing of the lips, plucking of the lips, in general self touching of the lips all right in particular i think we're going to talk about the chewing so it might be a, a chewing of the lips somewhat uh, indirectly and and you know sort of out of the way or it might be really bold as to where you literally question what you're doing it can also link with the inside of the cheek so the individual might be chewing on the inside of the cheek and really what it comes down to is an anxious outlet all right so it tends to be habitual and it's an outlet via the chewing of the lips or the cheek or so on and so forth it can be externalized to a pencil or a pen uh, potentially the fingers fingernails or any sort of object that the individual can put in between the lips and give a bit of a nibble to all right we have spoken about this in the past but we're going to re-clarify as to why this is happening okay so when it's externalized and you use um, you know the fingers or the pencil and so forth it is uh, regressive in a way that it is a internalized subconscious means of regressing back or if the person hasn't experienced it it's just a biological need to regress to the sucking of the teeth of the mother all right it's a very peaceful space to be it takes you back into a space where you were looked after and somebody else was there to look after you all right so you'll see these behaviors come out uh, in response to anxiety and insecurity and so on and so forth okay so uh, it's a subconscious return to the mouthing of the breast. Uh, in regards to not having a particular item and just chewing on the lips and so forth, it still is a means of self-soothing purely as the lips are covered in nerve endings and um, you know the stimulation provokes a surge of positive feel-good uh, hormones to the brain in regards to fighting off that stress okay so it's a defense mechanism um it can be a form of self-restraint okay so if it's a one-off and not necessarily a persistent baseline behavior and rather uh, a real-time response to a certain message or stimuli it can be a means of blocking the mouth so we've spoken mouth blocking behaviors and how an individual will find the means to conceal the mouth and the lips to ensure that they are not you know it's, it's sort of like a physiological response to the mental message of don't speak don't speak too much hold yourself back all right so that's a possibility okay although there's more um, efficient and bolder means of blocking the mouth. So for the most part, I think it's more of a uh, pacifying behavior, or at least that's what you'll see in the real world. All right. So when somebody is anxious, you can expect to see their bodies reflect a desire to turn inwards, all right, such as the introvert and the socially anxious, rather so than the outwards facing extrovert. So the individual may turn inwards and what's more inwards than the inside of the mouth. So as the individual chews on the cheeks or the lips and so on and so forth, uh, it it's an outwards declaration of anxiety and um, inwards facing feelings, okay? Initially, we spoke of the externals, so let's have a quick brief look over that. So if we're speaking of um, the biting of the lips, uh, engaging these feel-good hormones and sending these nerve endings into fire, which creates this positive feeling, you can touch the lips with the fingers for the same effect and so on and so forth, you know, whether it be a pen and so on and so forth. And you'll see this in regards to a uh, insecurity. Now, it might not necessarily be a conscious insecurity. Uh, some people might just get on a train of thought and just start doing it without even being consciously aware. I know because I catch myself doing these behaviors from time to time. Um, 
I don't necessarily touch my lips too much. Uh, that's not my form of behavior. But in regards to uh, other uh, insecure tics, when I'm on a... Um, you know, uncertain st uh, state of mind or train of thought, I'll only awaken to it so far into the action being done, you know, to a point where I might not even know how long I've been performing the action. And that's why body language is so incredible because it works primarily outside of our conscious awareness. So it's very telling. All right. So that's just a little talk. I understand it might have been a little bit vague, a little bit all over the place uh, today, but we've just had a general overview on lip behaviours and uh, behaviours of the mouth and where it could go from, where, whether it be, uh, you know, a momentary restraint, a mouth blocking behaviour or a general baseline behaviour as to that's how a person reacts in the face of insecurity and anxious situations. They deal with things via the tactile sensation of the lips and the mouth in that area in particular. Hopefully it's given you a little bit of food for thought at the least and you're able to uh, delve into other spaces and sort of consider whether you've seen this before or whether you do this. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Click like, click subscribe and leave a comment below. Thank you. One love.